Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Surfside Recovery Podcast. My name is Brian Licata, and we just wanted to let you guys know that if you or anyone is struggling with addiction, to please reach out to Surfside. You can give us a call at 609-709-4205 or visit us at surfside.org and all of our social media platforms. All right, and we're back. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Licata, here with the Surfside Recovery Podcast. Across from Mr. Ian Koch. Hello. You look super fancy in your tie-dye shirt today. Um, Thank you. I mi- take two. <laughs> I miss you, man. We haven't done a podcast in like quite a long time. And uh, the people know. are not complaining, but I am. I'm complaining and I'm sad. And hello. I don't know that people have even noticed, quite honestly. <laughs> no, no one has. No one has. No one has at all. No um, What's good? What's good in the hood? Nice, uh, nice tie-dye saltwater shirt. How, how's things going over there? Thank you. This was a, a test run. Um, we made uh, 50 of the actuals and sold 38 of them in a week. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, Saltwater's good. We opened uh, July 2nd under Governor Murphy's ridiculous restrictions. Um, we are open to... So the restrictions are interesting. We're open to personal training, um, and we are doing, uh, the residents don't have any restrictions because they live together, which is nice. So the Surfside guys, they're going in five days a week now, um, because the other gym still hasn't opened five, th- during there was, five days a week. Yeah. Which is what they were doing between CrossFit and the other gym. That's what they were doing, right, 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 you right, know, right. until, until COVID and that gym shut down. And then we were just doing CrossFit three days a week. So. Because now we have the space and we built it for technically for the residents, you know, residents, primary, the public, secondary. Right. Um, you know, we have it. We might as well use it. So they're in there Monday, Tuesday, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday at one o'clock. So um, they don't. The nice thing about them is they don't have any restrictions. They can do what they need to do. Um yeah, because they're all Which eating cool. and sleeping in the, in, the, in the same house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And we're taking uh, in the mornings, uh, starting Monday, we're going to have a van um, run run guys who are in phase three and phase four who are working, um, run them over early in the morning and let them get a workout in before work if they want to get up that early. So, What, what time is the, uh, the early class for those guys? Well, their their first personal training session will be at five thirty, so that's the that's what they get. Who's doing that? You? So. You the five thirty guy? No, no. <laughs> I can't. I can. I can get up. I get up that early. I can't work out that early. Oh yeah, because that's when uh, you do. That's when you do all your work. Is that early, right? You're, you're yeah, I, workout I, kind of guy. Uh, I would prefer to work if I could work out at like nine or nine thirty every day. That would be ideal. I end up typically working out in the afternoon um that morning i like that uninterrupted morning mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ugh, to be able to you know figure out what bills need to be paid or you know <laughs> whatever is on deck for the day right um, you know, so it's so it's good mm-hmm. the addiction treatment industry i know last Last time we had a podcast, we talked about how the phone, you know, wasn't particularly ringing for us or anybody else for that matter, but things are back in full board. People are going to rehab. It seems like, uh, you know, the quarantine, unfortunately, really beat people up. Um, so it's good. People are reaching out, seeking help. That's fantastic. Um, another interesting update I had, so you know how I complain often about, um, how in addiction treatment industry, I think there's a lot of unqualified people. They don't have like the addiction training and they end up getting jobs as counselors or therapists or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so recently there's been some people applying for jobs who have master's degrees, but they can't get the jobs because they don't have the New Jersey CADC or LCADC. So certified alcohol and drug counselor and licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't think it's good that these people can get can't get jobs because I like these people. They're you know acquaintances of mine, and right. I feel bad. I feel bad that they can't get a job. On the flip side of that coin, um, it's good that there's starting to be some attention given to you know appropriate credentials within uh, the addiction treatment facilities. So now, from, from what you mean you have talked about before, it, to me it seems like there's just no like oversight governing body type thing to because it, it's not done at a federal level, right? Like each each state has its own its own like Correct. parameters and stuff like that, which is which is cool. I mean, the state should be able to decide what they there's, what they want to do, but it doesn't there's ratios. Down. There's ratios, and you need to have X amount of people licensed for X amount of unlicensed people and per, per facility, right? Per facility. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and what's interesting about New Jersey, uh, is you can get the CADC certified alcohol and drug counselor credential with a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. So I got, uh, I was initially licensed through Vermont and in Vermont, you cannot, you have to have a bachelor's degree to get the CADC. Once you get your master's degree, then you can get your LCADC. In New Jersey, you can get your CADC without a bachelor's, but you have to have an LCADC. You have to have a master's to get the LCADC, the license. The, the nice thing about that, and, and I've actually talked to, we have you know, a few graduates who um, are looking at, you know, starting to go back to school, trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. One of them's already doing it, man. Which one? Dubs. Sean Dubs. He got... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He's I killing mean, it, yeah, man. Yeah, Sean's got his master's. He got his L... L uh, he's a licensed... Uh, what the hell was he? A licensed uh, LCS... Uh, uh, LSW. Lic LSW. He's a it, licensed... L L A C licensed apprentice. I don't something like that. He's he's the initial license before you get the actual. Yeah, license. he said he's about to start doing um, like a, a bunch of different tests and stuff like that. I actually got to send him yeah. a text today. See how he's doing. Yeah. So I mean, he went back. He got his master's, but right now, I guess we've got a, a you know some guys and you know and, and they're kind of at that like that jumping off place. And this is actually something we could really talk about as in terms of a topic, but you know, they're over a year sober or just hitting a year sober. Uh, and now it's like, now what do I do with my life? What, what am I going to do here? And, um, you know, the cool thing about the CADC is like, you know, you can, you can come out, you know, whether you have an associates, whether you're halfway through, you know, college classes, you can get yourself a CADC, your pay would jump, you know, from a $12 an hour job, your, your pay would jump to, you know, $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the schooling is about a year long, um, while you're getting an hour. So in a perfect world, you would get a job as a tech, you would get supervised, um, start the CADC courses and, um, eventually take the test, get licensed and, and go from there. Um, pretty, it's pretty interesting, um, you know, but ultimately like all these guys that, that I've been talking to, they're all in this same boat, which is that they're a year, year and a half sober and now what, mm -hmm. you know, they have a couple hobbies. They're not really pushing the hobbies. They've been really, um, kind of stuck in the uh i'm just sober now type of thing like i'm going to meetings i'm going to aa and and now they've got to find some hobbies you know yeah um, i remember i remember getting to that point where it was like all of a sudden there's this like realization that hit me and it was just like oh uh <laughs> now what do i do you know what i mean yeah it's like i'm i'm sober i feel comfortable in my sobriety but i'm bored yeah, and you're like, well, you what know. you know, what the hell do I feel like? Like, what am I, what am I trying to do now? Um, yeah. So I mean, I you know, I took a, a couple of different left turns, uh, I guess, in the past two years. Um, but you know, I, I've kind of come to the realization too that it's like, you know, 
nothing's really permanent, you know, like I was doing this video business for a while. Now I'm back working on a golf course again. And it's like, well, we're just going to have to wait and see what the hell happens. You know, you can plan and plan and plan and plan. And, uh, you know, then life just kind of throws some shit in your face and you just kind of got to deal with it, you know. But you got to have some fun in your life, too. <laughs> yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. I'm all about fun. All fun all the time. Yeah. All fun, you know, because well, and well, and one and one of these guys, you know, he works at at the grocery store, and um, and he said something like, you know, I'm 30, and I'm working at a grocery store, and I said, but put it in perspective, like if like he and this guy specifically has an associate's degree. I'm like, if you let's say you let's say you take a year to do the CADC courses mm -hmm. and then you jump back you get your CADC and then you jump back into your bachelor's you finish your bachelor's in two years and then your master's in two years that means by the time you're 35 years old you have a master's degree and and then you're licensed within the course of five years you go from twelve dollars an hour to fifty five thousand dollars a year or fifty five mm. yeah fifty five thousand dollars a year like overnight mm -hmm. you know but it's that you know oh i'm i'm so far out i'm five years out type of thing that you yeah, know i think that's a i think that's a problem that a lot of people have and i think it's it's one area where me and you are pretty similar that like uh we're always doing stuff because if we're not doing something we feel like we're, we're not like you know moving forward and i see a lot of people have have a problem getting you know, the initial step started to go do things. And, and like a, a bunch of my friends that I'm, that I'm pretty close with, they're all kind of the same mindset that they're always, you know, always constantly moving, you know, towards something, whether while they're on that journey, it switches into something else um, that the end sure. goal is, but they're, you know, they're always moving towards it. I actually got my haircut by, uh, by Mike at Gas Up yesterday. I mean, him, we're talking about, yeah. we were talking about you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you're saying, He's like, yo, so Ian's got this gym going on now, huh? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, the dude doesn't know how to not, not sit. <laughs> he can't sit still. <laughs> I started saying that, and Mike was like cracking up. Uh, but he was, uh, he was, he was happy for you, and thinks it's pretty, pretty cool what you're, uh, what you're doing with the gym. Thanks. <laughs> Somebody, my my sponsor said to me the other day. He said. He said, are you, you going to relax and take a break now? I said, what the hell would I do that for? I said, well, what, what would I do while I was taking that break? <laughs> he says, you would take a break. And I would say, but, I, but what would I do while I was taking the break? And he's like, well, you would take a break. And I was like, you don't get it. Like, not I'm not interested in taking a break. Yeah, my sponsor is the know? same way, man, dude. He, don't, he doesn't, he never sits still, ever. And like, I don't really... So I don't know if it's a, a good thing or a bad thing that, that I don't do that. Like I, I'm, I'm a person who, who likes to relax, but like I tried to go to the beach the other day by myself yesterday. It was actually right, right after uh, you called me and I sat on the beach for like a half hour. And then it was just like, Oh my God, there's so much shit you need to be doing. And then I, and then I, <laughs> then I got a, then I got a message. I, I had to get this computer worked on in uh, at the Apple store in Marlton and it was ready. And it's been like this whole process trying to get this thing fixed because the stores have been closed and I'm like, yeah. I'm going to get it right now because if, uh, you know, they, they, you know, go back like on like the lockdown scale and they shut the stores down again, like this thing would have been trapped inside the store. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to get it and I'm going to get it right now. <laughs> yeah. Like yesterday I, I worked out in the morning. I, I think I putzed around, I coached. Uh, the Surfside guys at one. I stained a whole bunch of wood for these things at the gym. Polyurethaned them. Uh, went kite surfing. Took them down to the gym. Ate dinner. Went to bed. Mm. Today I'll probably work out. Hopefully go kite surf this afternoon. How uh, how are, how are you digging the uh, coaching aspect of it? It's okay. I'm not. I'd rather not. I don't. Yeah. I don't mind it. I like. I coach two of the personal training sessions at five thirty, uh, Thursday and Friday nights, and then I do the residents 
currently I'm doing the residence Saturday and Sunday. So who who are the um, other? Is there any other Surfside staff members? That, is Beatley a coach too? Or and yeah, Andrew's coaching. Um, and then we have uh, a woman. We have a, a guy named Greg who's a Ocean City lifeguard and school teacher at Mainland High School. Uh-huh. Um, he's coaching uh, all Monday. He does all Monday. And then we have Nicole Perone. She is a vice principal at um, I forget what high school she at a local school here. Um, she's also getting her master's degree in mental health. She's coaching um, five thirty and eight o'clock Monday through Monday or, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Andrew's doing four o'clock. Paul does Saturdays and two five thirties, and then. Um, I do two of the five thirties as well. Mm. And a couple of our guys like, you know, Jared in Utah and Scott Hansen are going to, uh, they're going to get this coming weekend. Uh, they're going to do the level one to get certified to coach as well. So, ah, yes, 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 yes. The level one. Yeah. Beely showed me the book that he had and it, it seemed like it was a lot to try to get certified it, it to be a coach. Yeah. I guess that's a good thing. I mean, you're teaching people how to well, you know, do all yeah, these crazy and, and I mean, that's, and everything like that. It, it, yeah, it very much is personal training, you know, and there's a lot that goes into it. And it's not as simple as just like, okay, this is what we're going to do full send ahead. Right. You know, like as, as the workout's going on, you're consistently, you know, watching the athletes, making sure that you know, people's form is good that, you know, making sure that somebody doesn't necessarily need like lighter weights or, um, whatever it may be at the time and really kind of monitoring yeah. that. safety first. Yeah. Yeah. Really mm-hmm. safety first and, uh, mechanics consistency and then intensity. Right. Hmm. All right. So what's the, uh, what's, what's the, uh, you know, a few month outlook. I, I think we're going to take a little bit of a, a break on the podcast for the rest of the summer so we can get our shit together and then hopefully be yep. doing them live together in the same room. Yeah. In the fall, um, get back in, in action. Maybe we'll, uh, now that I kicked Andrew out of my office, we will, uh, is he uh, out for good? Maybe. Yeah. He'll cause he'll be down at the gym. So, so once is, he even o- is there an office for him at the gym or is he just office list? No, there's, he's got like a desk and a computer um, right when you walk in. But it's, you know, because we, our goal is to keep the gym open throughout the day. I mean, we got to get through this ridiculous election. And once the election's over, then COVID will be over and we can all go about our lives as normal again. Um, Oh, I can't. I don't even want to. You don't even want to know the rabbit hole I went down the other day. I um, do not. Neither do our listeners. <laughs> well, it looks like. So it looks like there's like a whole backlog on reported deaths. Uh huh. So like, there's still like New Jersey, for instance. They're reporting. You know, like yesterday they reported like whatever. We'll say 48 deaths or something. Um, but there's this backlog that is potentially showing like actually two people died yesterday of COVID and the other 40 plus deaths were from previous months that are just getting reported as a COVID death yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, and I, and I've said this before, it's so hard to like navigate like true safety and, and true precautions versus like, what is, what are we just being like, inundated with you know all the all the blue states are reporting low cases all the red states are reporting high cases the blue states are locked down the red states are open for business you know it's just like so whatever andrew sorry about my tangent um andrew is going to be down there during the day so we can you know eventually keep the gym open so if people want to pop in and work out in the middle of the day they can do that right um there's no point in, in him sitting in here. Right. When he could do his, he could do know, his work from there and, yeah, and, and keep an eye on the, uh, yeah. on the, on the place. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, and at some point we're going to want to do a fundraiser and, um, you know, we've got a couple people already in recovery slated for, you know, the scholarship memberships and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, um, you know, but, uh, this, this, uh, 
you know, we just got to wait and see, you know, see what's actually going on. Um, cool. Yeah. Beans. Cool beans, my friend. Um, so people, what, the Saltwater Athlete, uh, blah, 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 blah. the Saltwater Athletics website is live, correct? Oh, yeah. Salt, yeah, saltwaterathletics.org. Um, you can check it out. You can see what the mission is. Uh, it is a subsidiary of Surfside. Um, so technically Surfside owns, runs, operates the company. Who would have ever thought that you would have a company that also has a subsidiary company (laughs) underneath it? I know. (laughs) Your mom's probably like shaking her head. (laughs) She is. She is. is. Uh, all right. Until we pick up, uh, the podcast, make sure you check out salt, saltwaterathletics.com org um you know and as and as always and as always like you know if if you know somebody that's struggling with addiction please reach out you know our interventions and all that stuff is in full swing so um whatever we can do to be helpful uh please let us know all right we love all of you until next time see ya as always if you or someone you know is struggling please reach out to surfside you can give us a call at 609 709- 709-4205 or get us on the web at surfside.org.